People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe. Because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Now, why would aspirin become an issue? Because aspirin has been found to be effective at decreasing sudden cardiovascular events. Why? Because it's an antiplatelet. It causes a little bit more difficulty for clots. And guess what? Actually brings up an important issue. Most people think that a clot, what's actually causing the heart attack or stroke. They think, well, if I've got plaque, the plaque just grows in the artery until it slowly closes off. Like hair growing in a drain, like a bathtub drain, and slowly closing off the drain. That is plumbing. That's not the way heart attacks and strokes work. Tiny amounts of plaque can cause an event. In fact, two-thirds of cardiovascular events happen in plaque that is so minimal that it doesn't even impact the flow in the artery. If it's not impacting the flow, if it's that small, the common sense Assumption is that a piece of it's breaking off. That's not what's happening either. What happens is if you are building plaque, you're in a state of cardiovascular inflammation. You take friendly fire. Your body recognizes the fact that small dense LDL should not be accumulating. You have some burning in your glycocalyx of the endothelium, the intima lining of the artery wall. That's a very thin lining. It's where all the metabolic processes occur, just like marshlands. Same thing here. The lining of our artery wall is like a marshland. It's where all the metabolic processes occur. Oxygen's dropped off, carbon dioxide's picked up, sugars and proteins and building blocks are dropped off, waste products are picked up. It's not built for stamina and strength. The next layer, the muscle layer, the structural layer, it's called the media, isn't impacted by this process. So our own immune system says we need to get this plaque out of here. It starts to attack the plaque. It attacks plaque just like it would anything else, any other dead tissue or invader that's not supposed to be in a particular place. When it does that, it releases enzymes. And we can actually detect two of those enzymes. One of them is LPPLA2. The other one is myeloperoxidase. Those are both tests that we look for in the cardiovascular inflammation panel that we do with testing for cardiovascular inflammation. Now, what has all this got to do with aspirin and with cardiovascular events? Well, if you've got cardiovascular inflammation, if you've got those two enzymes attacking plaque, you get softening of that plaque. That's what those enzymes do. They soften that plaque. Plaque, when it's soft, can squeeze back through the lining, the intimate layer, and touch the blood. If it does and touches flowing blood, it causes a clot. And a clot is what kills you. It's what causes the cardiovascular disease. It can even cause chronic disease like heart failure and Alzheimer's. Why and how does it do that? Well, if you think about it, instead of having one big catastrophic event, if you have microscopic events, microscopic clots, the tissue of your body, whether it's your brain or your heart, begin to look like Swiss cheese because you lose a few cells at a time instead of a whole section of tissue. That's what aspirin for secondary prevention is all about. Unfortunately, way too few people are taking aspirin, especially after announcements from the Preventive Services Task Force said, oh, we don't recommend it for primary prevention anymore. We never did. There's a lot of confusion about primary versus secondary prevention for cardiovascular disease. People think, if I've never had an event, then that's primary prevention. No. If you're only taking it based on your age, that's primary prevention. The critical difference here is this. If you have plaque anywhere documented in your arteries, a positive calcium score of any love, a positive CIMT, even an x-ray, sometimes a dental x-ray will show up a little piece of calcium in the arteries of the head and neck. Any of those things indicate that you've got plaque. And at that point, you should be taking at least baby aspirin, unless you have something like atrial fib, at which point you should consider a different type of blood thinner.